Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from a brand that I only recently became acquainted with. Um, now, uh, about two weeks ago, roughly, I took a look at the Kizzy K75 Pro. Um, a very interesting 75% three mode that includes a screen. Now, it only shows the battery status but actually sounds quite nice, has a PC plate, gasket mounted, and is pretty well priced. Um, now they're releasing a new keyboard. They're, they've sent me an early preview. I will be releasing this video on the day that they release the keyboard. So if you're watching, it is available now. Um, the keyboard I'm taking a look at is the Z98 from Kizzy. Now, I have noticed that 1800s which this one basically isn't the primary difference between an 1800 and a 98 percent is if um, the arrow cluster is exploded out as well as that little bit of space um, between the numpad and the rest of the keyboard now some 1800s will actually have a column navigation column here that almost comes closer to i'd say a 99 percent because it's um almost you know 104 keys which would be a full-size keyboard though there are some 108 key full-size keyboards so that's where you'll see a lot of variances like i mean they call this the z98 i've actually seen this layout be called a 94 percent 96 percent and even another one that i took a look at not too long ago which i can't remember which one they wanted to call it a compact 90 percent and they, they asked me to correct it and i'm like but this is at, at, at minimum a 94%, but technically it's a 96%. And they're like, no, it's a 90%. But it was basically this layout. So um, I don't create the layouts or the percentages. I'm just following what I have learned and what I read online. So today we're taking a look at the Kizzy C98. Um, it is an 1800. It's a, a PC plate that appears to have some flex cuts in it. Uh, this one they sent to me, I believe, with tactile switches, with the Eternity tactile switches. They actually have a whole line of switches coming out. Um, and I, I, the other keyboard had, um, I had both the, uh, both the Eternity and the Momentary or Moment uh, linear switch. They're surprisingly good switches. So we've got this pre-built. 1800 uh, with a customizable screen but again because this one hasn't been released yet i don't know much about it and i just kind of stayed away so i'll be discovering right along with you guys so let's go ahead and open it up first let's take a look what's in the box so we have a very nice i gotta appreciate this as i'm getting older it's getting harder to read so having big nice text um it's just, it's nice. I usually like to keep my user manual around the keyboard for at least the first couple of days so that I can get used to any of the shortcuts that I might be needing. But I do like it when it's nice and big. Now this serves as kind of like a user guide as well as a, you know, user card, which comes in a lot of keyboards. So also included in the box, we see that we have some extra keys uh, and they do appear to be double shot. We'll have to find out if those are PBT or ABS. We also have what looks to be a very nice USB A to USB C cable. Now this is it's rubberized, but it's it's a thicker rubber, um, and it has metal ends, and it comes with the protectant on it. And it does have. I actually prefer these over the Velcro straps. I don't know how many times I wrap it and then I realize I got to wrap it the other way. This one is a nice. It feels like a. Very thin leather, and it even has their logo stamped on it. This is not bad at all. I like, I really like this cable. I gotta say. We also have a standard wire switch puller. As well as extra switches. They also included extra switches in the K75 Pro. And it is very, very um, appreciated to have extra switches. So yeah, these are the Eternity uh, tactile switches. And uh, I would call them a medium tactile. They do have a nice bump, but it's not that heavy and it's a lighter spring, but 
it is, I do not believe they are pre-lubed. They have the tiniest amount of ping, but it just can't be heard when you're loading it up in a PC plate and the way they, they build their keyboards out. I, I do not hear it when typing and I am quite sensitive to ping. And here we are with the Kizzy Z98. Now it looks like we actually have another little card, but this is push button toggle switch functions. Push and hold for three seconds to turn the keyboard on and off. And on the main interface, click to switch between volume adjustment and selection function. Okay, so it has a multi-purpose. And instead of a knob, it looks like we have a little toggle switch or barrel switch, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have Bluetooth, three, three device positions for Bluetooth, as well as 2.4. It looks like, yep, we have a pocket for the 2.4. Oh, look, we also have a hub. I believe the K75 also, yep, this one also has a hub. The uh, 2.4 dongle is pocketed down at the bottom on the K75, but on the Z98, we see that it actually has a nice pocket on the back and it feels to have a magnetic lock in there, so you shouldn't lose it accidentally. And it also comes with a nice dust cover. Now here it does state um, that the screen is customizable, so we'll have to take a look at that. It does look like a tinier screen, but I think it should still be fine. Oh, this is a, this is more of like a, not a toggle switch, not a momentary. It's like a barrel encoder with a momentary, I think. So we'll have to see how that works. But I said press and hold for three seconds. And there it is. Oh, it has a little boot animation. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. And then we have the time. Huh. 2.37? Hey, it's actually set to my time zone. Go figure. And it's the right date and everything. Huh. Huh. I'm impressed. So taking a look at this really quick, we have a very interesting design. It is very rounded going from the top to the bottom. It has a very shiny, I'm going to guess it's ABS, but I'll need to uh, look that up. All right, I guess that, oh, that, oh, the vol this can be volume. Oh, nice. It even has a display. And then if we uh, click it again, it looks like, oh, we can go into, or change the modes, change the time, and ch and switch to the GIF. That is pretty cool. I've got, oh, wow. Con connect, go to wired, go to wireless, Bluetooth 1, Bluetooth 2, Bluetooth 3, and then back. All right, I, I see I like that. All right, it looks like these, uh, I wasn't sure if these are side windows, but they're definitely protected. No, I don't think they're light diffusers, but even the um, the side, that is an interesting look. Let's go ahead and take the protector off the other side. My keyboard weighs just enough. It doesn't, it doesn't feel too heavy, but it doesn't feel unsubstantial. It feels just right. Um, I'm going to guess these are ABS keycaps, but it almost looks like they're an SA or a sculpted OEM. But because they're tall, they're quite sculpted, and I got to say, I like them. I like the looks of them, that's for sure. Now, let's see what we've got hiding under here. Now, that's one thing I do like about these uh, switches from them, is that they have this... Uh, diffuser window in here that really helps the light to shine up it really just it becomes like a an extender of the light in the case it does appear that we have an ixpe sheet and i don't think there's pet just just ixpe and it does look like there's a yeah it's a lighter foam appears to be between the plate and the pcb but like I said, we have that um, PC plate. Yeah, it's definitely a PC plate. We have south-facing LEDs, um, and we do have a gasket mount. 
So this is the red white uh, version. They do have uh, five different colorways here, including matcha, matcha, lemon sea salt, Cabernet Sauvignon, and blackberry. They're all actually quite interesting. Okay, I was close. These are KSA profiles, so they are an offshoot or very similar to SA, but I guess K stands for Kizzy, so it's Kizzy's SA. Um, I gotta say, I, I, I do, I'm a, very fond of SA, so um, any variant I'm usually gonna like. Um, I gotta say, I do, I like the lines on this. It's just different. I have not seen any other um, in stock keyboard that has these kind of lines on it. I mean, it's just round everywhere. There's hardly like a straight line. I mean, obviously, except for you know, the plate cutouts, but it's quite interesting. Um, we also have our sub legends on the side, um, also showing you know the Windows Mac difference. I mean, Windows are on top, the Mac are on the side, and then we have the um when we don't have numlock on where the keys are there wow that's nice so that's delete just regularly but function and we turn it on and off the numlock i actually like that um i usually if it's not already programmed i like the delete either up here f13 or right there on the other side of the max space i probably one of the most you well delete and then insert delete insert and then the um, home tilt because i use linux so we can see that we have some pretty strong lights but let's see if we turn this up all the way although we have that's uh, that's the thing we got a control center here oh that's just switching to the gif oh it's already got a gif loaded up on there of a cute tabby sleeping with his bag of chips <laughs> it's adorable now it is a tiny screen so don't get me wrong i love screens on keyboards they're more more of a um of an aesthetic although there are a few keyboards though i haven't seen too many i don't think i've seen one pre-built that actually allows you to display custom data like say your words permitted or show your cpu cycles but that usually requires like writing some scripts and you know doing a little bit more but those are usually on more higher end kits that i've seen so far but let's see how long it takes before in stock keyboards catch up all right i'm gonna have to go through this to get used to it i don't know where that <laughs> or how how i got to that home menu ah oh, there we go i'm gonna have to get used to how this works but so far i like it and i like that it has the volume control um though it doesn't have a press for mute though we also have volume control here as well as mute there but i'm big on having the volume knob so that i can press mute real quickly if i've got some music blaring while i'm programming so but like i said on the back we have the 2.4 we have a usb a port as well as an extra usb c port so there's basically a hub built in i almost wish that this in between layer had some shine through but i don't think that it does it says no reason to return or exchange within seven days after peeling off the film so i'm guessing it means keep that on until you're sure you're not going to be exchanging it i like to keep this protective sticker on until i actually get a cutout uh, from an old screen uh, protector for a phone that way i can make sure that this doesn't get scratched up because usually it's just plastic on top of there and any little thing could scratch it up i'm almost curious about opening it up which i will at a future date um, to see about this layer in between but i don't think any of the few promotional photos i've seen that it actually has any light but it does seem almost a little translucent all right let's put this switch back in Uh, it does have a deeper tone to it, um, stock as it is. And they're actually, it's actually pretty loud. Let's check out these stabilizers. So the stabilizers do come lubricated. They do feel like 
They could be palm. They're quite soft, and they're these newer ones. I keep seeing these with this uh, bar in the middle there. Instead of having feet, it has this bar. And I'm wondering, because it's a smaller surface area, that helps eliminate any ticking uh, when it actually comes down on the PCB. And, uh, yep, there is no support for screw and stabilizers, which I've, I've kind of come to expect. But we can see that the PCB has flex cuts. <laughs> now, that's pretty cool. In stock keyboards, this is not the first one that I've seen with flex cut. But it's, um, it's one of the first ones. But to have a flex cut and a pre-built, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And... It, like I said, it is gasket mounted. It's not like amazingly flexy, but it has it has enough flex for me. I really don't like trampoline type flex. Everyone likes their own thing, but when it's a keyboard that's like a trampoline, it's almost like I bounce off of it. It's like, that's just too much flex for me. I like a little bit of stability when I am typing. Right, let's pop these back in and see how well they attach to the plate. I'm also finding that uh, these stock stabilizers are starting to get better as well. I mean, a lot of the components of these pre-built are becoming much better, but the stock stabilizers, I mean, that is very well attached. The tiny amount of wiggle is really, I think, due to the softness of the, um, the PC plate. Yeah, that's uh, it's very well attached, and as you can hear now and you'll hear in the sound test, it is... Um, Nice and smooth, no um, no ticking whatsoever. I want to see if there's padding below here. Yep, they even have the padding below the space bar. Kind of thought so from listening to it. It's it's muted. Um, let's see how thick these keycaps are. Basically, 1.6. I mean, to hold it, that's just a heavy key. 1.6, 1.7 millimeters in thickness that's uh that's a good thickness now let me make sure that's not just for the space bar let me just grab uh, just a regular key 1.7 that's um that's close to if not one of the thickest body thickness on a keycap for a pre-built yet i mean this is thicker than a lot of nice keycap sets. So props to Kizzy on that. Thank you very much. That's that's what I think is lending to the the deeper tone, that and attack tone. But it definitely I mean I guess some might argue it's a little clacky, but I think it's it's a little more on the thocky side, honestly. A stock Thaki with a customized screen. It's just, and like I said, the 1800 98 percent seem to be just growing in popularity. I do see a lot of people saying, I currently have a full size, but I'd like to, you know, reduce in size. I don't think I can use a 75 percent. If I get a TKL, I'd have to use a numpad, but I think I could use a 98 percent. I know I can get by with a 98 percent. I'm a 98% on my desk at the moment, um, or I should say an 1800, but this, whereas, I mean, don't get me wrong, 75% are definitely still popular and they're not going away, but I just think that the 1800s are growing in popularity. Yes, 60%, 65% will always remain popular to a certain degree. I don't think they're ever going to you know, die down because um, they take up a lot less space. Gamers prefer them. Um, they're more convenient when on the move. But when you want to sit down and work, especially if you're doing data entry, programming, anything that requires a lot of number inputs, a numpad is just so time-saving. Instead of sitting here doing this, a decimal, huh? Not, no, sit here and just... It's just much easier. And the fact is, you know, regardless of full size, I don't have one here. I don't have too many full size keyboards. <laughs> but um, 
you know, you're saving, I'd say probably about 20% um, a desk space. So if you got limited desk space, but you need, you know, full size, I think this is going to do it for most people. Um, I do have to take a look at the software, but I do know that they have remapping, but we'll have to see which one, which key, if there's any keys that can't be remapped as there is on some of these pre-builds though. I, I've got to say, I am, I will always be QMK via preferably, but a lot of these softwares, um, a lot of this closed source software is becoming much better. And as far as functionality, I'm seeing tap a lot more often. I'm actually seeing them as function layers where sometimes it only one or two extra layers, but they have the actual functionality of a layer. I think they're more replicating it. It's kind of just a, uh, I mean, it. in the end, it's still a layer, but the way that it works just looks a little different, but you can do that macros, like never ending um, per key RGB. So closed source software is never going to beat Via or QMK in my opinion, but I think a lot of these closed source software are getting to a very competitive level to where it's, um, I mean, obviously the one issue that they're just not gonna overcome is that most of the times the software is only for Windows. So if you wanna customize your keyboard and you only have a Mac or you only have a Linux such as myself, I mean, I, I work primarily in Linux. I don't only have a Linux machine. Um, then you are kind of stuck and needing to go to a Windows PC or actually spin up a um, virtual machine just to program your keyboard, which, you know, if you don't already have a virtual machine, it's kind of a big, <laughs> it's a lot of work to go through just to program your keyboard. I would love, I've seen a couple of keyboards do this, but just not as much as I thought I'd be seeing it perhaps by next year, but I've seen a couple of keyboards that actually offer the ability to switch from a VIA Although some of these VIA implementations are, they're, they're missing some of the functionality. Like they, like you open up VIA and VIA will show, hey, you can do tap, but if you try to program it, it won't work. Um, and certain functionalities just aren't there because, well, I don't know because they don't share the source code. There's also another thing I've seen a lot of keyboard manufacturers do when they say this is a QMK VIA keyboard. Well, for one, I can't find the QMK source anywhere, so... And it's not in the, I mean, if it's not in the official QMK repo and they don't have a repository with the source files in it, because I mean, it to me, it's fine to be QMK, even if it's not in the QMK source repo, as long as they provide the source tree, then I can go in there and make changes. And usually, I mean, creating a VIA key map is very easy. It literally takes like five minutes. Uh, Joe Scotto has a really good video on how to do that in case you have the QMK source, but you don't have the VIA key map file, because basically that's what it is. It's like changing or laying out a different key map that has all the instructions to communicate VIA commands directly down to the QMK firmware layer. So I'll link that video down below uh, so that you guys can take a look at it in case, you know, you ever come across that situation. So I would like to see because there's no way and i would not even dare think to ask that manufacturers hey you got to make sure if you release a keyboard you need to have programming software for every single operating system or at least windows mac and linux that's that's untenable there there there's too much work for them to have to build software for three different platforms most of the time too they're getting if they're you know getting this from a manufacturer and they're a brand that's selling it they get like a pared down version of the software and they just get to configure and customize it because they have a base software there's no base software for different operating systems now don't get me wrong there are some pre-builds that do have mac software but i have not to date come across a pre-built keyboard that has linux configuration software and i i don't know that we'll ever see that despite the fact that linux is used um it's used a lot it's just like they just assume everybody's running windows now windows is the primary operating system used throughout the world so i can't blame them on that but it's not the only one but that was a rant 
let's get out of the weeds and come back to the keyboard. So looks like we have a sleep mode, but it comes back on pretty instantly. Yeah, I gotta say this is a uh, The way this sounds stock is just phenomenal. I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Whereas when I first started doing this, there was every once in a while I've, I would come across a keyboard that sounded pretty good stock. But even that pretty good does not match up to in the last six, eight months, the keyboards I've been opening up and testing straight out of the box, the pre built the majority of them sound way better than pretty good. It's just every once in a while I get a keyboard that's uh, oh, a little flat. Something that last year I would have been like, ah, this is pretty good stock. Nowadays it is almost like, eh, these are just, I mean, these keyboards are just, they're blowing my mind. The, the market is changing at such a, such a rapid pace. The features and functionality that we're getting at very reasonable prices. They did not provide me with the price. So I am not sure what this keyboard is going to cost when it's released. But I will update it in the description once it is released. Although I'll, I'll email them. It is the weekend, but I'll email them and perhaps they get to me uh, before I edit and publish. And I can put that in the technical section. But again, the bottom... Well, the whole case, I gotta say, I just, I love how it's just round all the way around. I mean, there's just, even though this is not a light diffuse section, I love, I love it. And this, the red is, uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I don't know if that's a little bit of light bleed or is it trying to do an effect? Yeah, I really wanted this to have side lights but i don't like i said it's very minimal what i have right now is just a few pictures and i don't see any actually with the lights on um yeah colorful customized screen four layers of sound absorbing gasket structure design full key conflict free operation three mode wireless and wired connectivity dynamic rgb light with musical rhythm effects um Personally, folks, I would not use the rhythm effects, uh, but that's just me. Um, KSA, PBT. Oh, these are PBT. I was, I would have guessed these were ABS because of how shiny they are, but they are PBT. I, again, that's probably lending to that deeper tone. Not always, but most of the time, PBT is going to be a little bit deeper than ABS. I am very pleased with this keyboard. Oh, we do have the two kick out feet, so we can get three different typing angles. Uh, we do have a 3750 milliamp hour battery, and we have the numerous colorways. So being able to control the lights through there is pretty cool. I kind of wish they had a function to do it. Because, um, I mean, going through a menu can sometimes just be, you have to press it, to put it in volume node, press it again to put it in this menu mode. You can select how the home is, layout, windows, effects, and it seems to have 12 effects. Yeah, we got a little lock icon. I wonder if that's a, yep, looks like it's a windows lock. And if I do that, yep, takes it off. All right. I like that it does have the indicators for what modes it's in and everything. So we see that we're in Windows. Is that a NumLock? Yep. NumLock indicator. I gotta say, I like how this keyboard sounds out of the box. I, um, I think I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, use this as my daily driver, at least until release date. This is a uh, I'm really digging this keyboard. I'm, I like that the controls are there, though I want to see if there's a way, if when I open up the software, I can actually make some changes to um, or add shortcut keys to be able to turn lights on and off or switch to the effects or the colors. I'm going to guess that not, but 
we'll see. And another thing that's just uh, it's something, just me being nitpicky, but I know Numlock, but why is Numlock all caps while every other one is regular? And then we see, all right, all of the regular legends are all caps lock, but the and the numlock is, but then insert, print skein, pause, page up, home. All of those are regular capped. So I like more. It, it, it should all be the same. If you're going to use caps, then use all caps on all of them. If not, then use regular caps. But this just uniformity. But that's just me nitpicking. Um, I'm trying to cover as much as I can. So out of the box, this is up there. I... I almost wanted to start like a spreadsheet to show, you know, like scores what I think of a keyboard out of the box, how it sounds, but it just, it would be too hard to, to discern. A lot of these, they sound good. They have, they have different tones, but a lot of these sound really good out of the box and it's just getting better and better. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Kizzy Z98, a three mode 1800 with a custom screen pre-built keyboard. It is available with Kizzy Moment or Eternity Tactile switches. It is also preloaded with double shot PDT keycaps in the KSA profile matching the color of the keyboard, which there are five colorways available. It is a gasket mounted PC plate with flex cuts and includes a south facing three and five pin hot swap PCB. It comes very well dampened with a 3750 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 1046 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at just 20 millimeters off the typing surface while the back sits at 27 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. When extending out the first pair of fold out feet, we will raise the back up to 32 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to eight degrees. Using the final pair of flip out feet will raise the back to 38 millimeters, changing the typing angle to 11 degrees. As this keyboard is set to be released on the 25th, I do not yet have an MSRP. So I went to go download the software, but when I got on my Windows machine, I typed in Kizzy and I already had the software installed for the K75 Pro and it detected this one. So it's the same software for multiple keyboards, which I so appreciate because it's less software package that I have to install. I, I mean, if you've ever bought from EpoMaker, you know that some software or some manufacturers will literally have a different piece of software for each of their keyboards. So if you've got five of their keyboards, you've got five software packages that you have to install now one thing i did want to note about this that i it completely skipped my mind this is uh uh because you will see this on the yunzi store as well because this is a kizzy and a yunzi collaboration so um they call it the z98 pro whereas kizzy just calls it the z98 i did not find any differences between the two the software is uh very complete um it has not only does it have the default layer function one function two layer but it has a tap layer as well now it has tap that you can enable and then it has a number that's attached to it i'll have to test to see if that's a milliseconds is how many taps um because it goes all the way up to like 64 so i doubt 64 taps to activate it it also has the ability to um, change the um the uh, screen uh to GIF. I uploaded a little Diablo GIF. Um, you're going to have to find the right resolution. Higher resolution ones won't fit, but it's a fairly um, easy process. You just load up a GIF, save it, it uploads it to the keyboard. The keyboard actually shows a percentage while it's uploading. And I did the per key RGB setting up red and white just real quick, but uh, it's super easy. It does have the um, different effects for music or audio matching um, and does have built-in software and firmware check updates um, and macros it seems to have unlimited macros and as far as the layers go you can actually create different profiles and each profile has all of those layers so you can 
literally have one setup for gaming, one profile that has a bunch of layered map, and then you can have one for work. And then, I don't know, a third one for design, I don't know, a video editing, what have you. So it's that's kind of cool, though I did not find a way to switch profiles from what, from the keyboard itself, though I could have missed it. Um, again, this keyboard, uh, once if you're watching it, then it's already been released. I will update it with the MSRP for this keyboard. Uh, but I have got to say, this is, as soon as I'm done, this is going on my desk, and it's going to be my daily driver um, because I, I quite enjoy it. I, I like how it sounds. I like how it's laid out. The gasket is just enough for me. It's not too much, and it's pleasant. It's pleasant out of the box. So, uh, um, I commend Kizzy, Yunzi, uh, a number of companies, Mons Geek, uh, just all these companies are coming out with these great inside keyboards, and it just continues to get better. So, uh, this one is definitely one that that. I very much enjoy. I can't wait. I I can't wait to come back to it and open it up. Now it is gasket mounted, but it has eight screws. So I'm gonna guess there's probably some you know some things we'll have to you know look out for while we're in there. But it doesn't have any um, switches or anything on the side, so we won't have to worry about that. I'm gonna guess this is one piece right there um, that should just come up with the top. But I, uh, I've i got a couple of mods in mind that I think will make this even crunchier. Because that's, that's what I I feel like the default sound of this with the Eternity Tack House, which is just the very crunchy sound. And I quite like it. I also like the round corners. I like the two-tone. Um, I don't know. It's uh, Oh, and I like the KSA keycaps. Uh, I mean, a pre-built with... SA style or SA, SA adjacent <laughs> profile. It's a, it's a steal. It's a, it's a, it's a deal. This is a very nice pre-built. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be critical <laughs> of keyboards that are coming out. I, it's one of the things that a lot of people have thanked me for um, over the time that I've been doing this is that, you know, Hey, I'm honest about it. And you know, even somewhat critical, but I do my best to be critical without being mean or distasteful or just, you know, rude for no reason. There's no reason. I, I, I don't think that any design is done, you know, in order specifically in order to make customers unhappy of the features that it has. I just, I will just point that out because I, I am a consumer. I spend money and, and, if I'm going to spend, you know, the money that some of these keyboards ask for, well, and I, you know, wanted to not only make sure that it's going to last, but it's going to have the features that are going to work for me. And it's going to, it's not going to get in my way of working. It's going to help me to achieve what I need to. I mean, it may not make me more productive, but it's not going to interfere with my production or slow me down. Um, so this is one of those keyboards that it's just, uh, like I said, it's going on my bench, and <laughs> I love me some keyboards, and I honestly, I'd, I'd love to take a look at the other um, colorways, but I think one is enough. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Kizzy Z98-1800. Uh, they say they call it a 94%. It might be because it's missing these four keys up here, and it's not a 96%. Um so I do hope that you guys enjoyed, enjoyed the video, enjoyed the sound test. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions for what you'd like me to do when I open it up and, you know, mods, anything you'd like me to take a look at, please let me know down in the description below. Let's get a conversation going. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.